Like the Daleks, Skaro has been in Doctor Who from the very beginning, and because it's been around for so long, many of its most fascinating details and secrets are quite easy to miss. I'm Will for Who Culture, and here are 10 secrets of Skaro you need to know. 10. It features a polluted lake full of horrifying creatures. Just like our own planet Earth, Skaro is an enormous melting pot of climates, geographical features, and ecosystems. And, as you'd expect from a planet that birthed the Daleks, a lot of these are quite deadly. Case in point, the Lake of Mutations, which, as its name suggests, is a toxic lake that has mutated the creatures that live in and around it, making it extremely dangerous to pass through, even for the Daleks themselves. This lake first appeared all the way back in Doctor Who's second serial, The Daleks, where a small monster with glowing eyes rises from the water and terrifies Ian. Since this story aired back in the mid-60s, we've learned that other creatures, like the two-headed dinosaur-like Terracons, also call the Lake of Mutations their home. Basically, you're better off taking your chances with the Daleks. 9. One of its moons is a Dalek factory. Like a lot of ordinary planets, Skaro has a moon. In fact, it has three, two of which are natural, and one of which was constructed by the Daleks for some characteristically devious purposes. This third moon, Falcus, is interesting in the sense that its purpose is to serve as a Dalek-making machine, capable of manufacturing thousands of the tin cans in a matter of seconds. This means that Falcus could work as a failsafe for the Daleks, in case they ever came close to extinction. We know from the TV show that the Daleks will go to extreme lengths to preserve their species, so having a backup plan like Falcus is definitely in line with their philosophy of Dalek supremacy. 8. It's home to a race of mutated cannibals. Considering that the Daleks love themselves a scrap, Skaro has seen many battles over its lifetime. One of the biggest was the Thousand Year War, a clash between the Khaleds and the Thals, which resulted in Skaro being ravaged by radiation. And this toxic land birthed a brand new race of sorts, the Mutos, monsters that were created by the chemical weapons used during the war. Essentially mutated Khaleds or Thals, Mutos live out in the wastelands of Skaro, banished to a life of scavenging and hiding, and one of the reasons they're able to survive might be because they'll do anything it takes to keep their bellies full. And by anything, I really do mean anything. As mentioned in the big Finnish audio dramas titled Davros and Purity, the Mutos are known to engage in cannibalism. Yummy. 7. The entire planet can switch solar systems. Skaro is obviously not part of the Earth's solar system, thank God. But bizarrely, one story showed that Skaro is actually capable of switching solar systems, should the need arise. Written by Dalek creator Terry Nation, Invasion of the Daleks is a comic strip in which Skaro is described as having moved into orbit around the Earth's sun bringing it directly into our solar system. The Daleks have done this because they want to invade Earth, to stop humanity from exploring space. Though we've never seen anything quite like this in Doctor Who itself, the idea of the Daleks possessing planet-moving technology was featured in the 2008 Series 4 finale. Here, the Daleks steal over two dozen planets, moving them from their own solar systems and relocating them to a region of space called the Medusa Cascade. This in mind, the idea of the Daleks being able to apply similar technology to Skaro itself isn't much of a reach. 6. One of its regions is under constant sub-zero temperatures. As if a toxic lake full of monsters and a race of mutant cannibals wasn't enough, there's also a region of Skaro that lives under constant sub-zero temperatures, giving the planet yet another deadly tool to add to its utility belt of death. A comic strip published in issue 77 of TV Century 21 depicts a Dalek flying its spaceship over the polar mountains, a series of icy peaks that are so cold the Dalek notes that its internal radial heat is actually starting to fail. This same comic strip also shows us a sandy desert area of Skaro, where the Daleks exterminate the living daylights out of an unidentified race of sand-dwelling creatures. I mean, they're Daleks, what else were they gonna do? 5. The meaning of the word Skaro We've heard the word Skaro spoken countless times throughout Doctor Who history, but in the TV show, there's never been any discussion about what the word itself means. Not that it needs to have a meaning, many fictional names don't, but in this case, Skaro actually does. John Peel's 1997 novel, The War of the Daleks, features the in-universe creator of the Daleks, Davros, and touches on the destruction of Skaro in the 1988 serial Remembrance of the Daleks. In Chapter 8 of this novel, an exchange between Davros and a Dalek reveals simply that the word Skaro means home in the original Khaled tongue. 
Now, whether this is really canon is up to you, but since the Khaleds lived on Skaro long before the Daleks were even created, Skaro meaning home does make a lot of sense. 4. Its native plant life is poisonous and sentient. Considering the enormous amount of dangers littered across its regions, it won't come as a shock to learn that Skaro's plant life is also quite a threat. Colorful flowers and green grassy plains are two things you will not find here. The Varga plants that are native to Skaro are truly disturbing life forms. They're huge, cactus-like plants that attack with poisonous thorns, which infect their victims with an overwhelming desire to kill. Over time, this poison will infect the victims in entire system, which will result in them being transformed into a Varga plant themselves. It is a grisly fate. As if these monsters weren't disturbing enough already, they can also use their roots to drag themselves along the ground. Everybody gangster till the cactus starts moving. 3. Hand Mine Fields Are Cleared by Enslaved Mutos 2015's Series 9 premiere, The Magician's Apprentice, introduced the creepy hand mines into Doctor Who canon. These monsters are named quite aptly. They're hands that lurk beneath the ground like mines, and are triggered when people walk on top of them, snatching their victims and pulling them down into the earth. Hand mines were present on Skaro during the Thousand Year War, and they're basically inescapable. In fact, during The Magician's Apprentice, the Doctor notes that they leave you with a one in 1,000 chance of survival. And this brings us back to the Mutos. Handmines are extremely dangerous, and one of the only ways to get rid of them is to actually trigger them. And so, as mentioned in the big Finnish audio drama The Master's Dalek Plan, the Khaleds would capture Mutos and send them into the field to locate any handmines. Since there isn't much chance of escaping a handmine once it's grabbed you, it's likely countless Mutos died in this way. 2. Its high levels of pollution create acidic rainfall With the Khaleds and the Thals blowing each other to smithereens during the Thousand Year War, and the Daleks shooting anything that moves, it's fair to say that nobody on Skaro is all that concerned about the environment. For proof, we need only look at the insane levels of pollution that plague vast portions of the planet. In the video game story, City of the Daleks, the Eleventh Doctor and Amy Pond take a trip to Kalan, the capital city of Skaro. Upon arrival, the Doctor tells Amy that it never stops raining, and that the atmosphere is made up of 30% sulfuric acid. This is because Kalan contains a bunch of Dalek factories that are constantly spewing toxins into the air. A rainy Skaro was also shown in the opening scene of Series 7's Asylum of the Daleks, although in this case, we don't get a good sense of how acidic the rain actually is. 1. There's more than one Skaro The Daleks generally don't understand concepts like mercy, forgiveness, and empathy, being as single-mindedly evil as they are. And clearly, they don't really understand the concept of home either, because they aren't too fussed about which random planets they actually end up living on. On a few occasions, it's been mentioned that the Daleks have taken over other planets, and named them Skaro as well. Or rather, New Skaro. New Skaro was mentioned in the Virgin New Adventures novel Birthright, where not many details details were revealed about it. Still, it's clear that the Daleks have no problems with abandoning the original Skaro and taking that name with them elsewhere. Then in 2007's two-part story, Daleks in Manhattan slash Evolution of the Daleks, the Daleks mention that the planet Earth will soon become New Skaro, but this plan also goes awry when the Tenth Doctor intervenes. The Daleks are simply determined to survive, no matter the cost, even if they have to switch home planets to do it. And there you have it folks, 10 secrets of Skaro you need to know. Feel free to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it, and drop me a follow on Twitter at uslidogu. I'm Will for Who Culture, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you next time.